All right, here we go. Welcome to a very special Team Church online meetup on effective online small groups and meetings. So glad everyone's here today. Uh, I'm going to introduce the guests that are joining me. We're going to have a great conversation on um, just navigating meetings and, and getting FaceTime with people in our social distancing world, our quarantine world. Uh, right now, I'm broadcasting from my attic today. Come on, somebody. That is a, that is a quarantine office if I have ever heard of one. So, so glad you're here today. Um, my first guest that's joining us for this call is Pastor Lincoln Nugent, who is our Yakima location pastor uh, at Champion Center, my home church on the east side. Say what's up to everybody, Pastor Lincoln. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, so glad to be here. Just an honor to be a part of this. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this new season and of God's church and, and what he's using technology to do. I'm excited to share, but I know I'm going to learn um, just as much. I'm leaned in. I'm ready to go. And I'm just honored to be a part of this. And thank you all for being here with us. Now, we're going to have some fun today. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, I'm also joined by Probably the person who does near the most at Champion Center these days. Uh, I think we would all agree that I don't know the walls would be standing right now without Amanda McDonald. Uh, say what's up to everybody, Amanda. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're so excited you're here. Love that we're all growing and learning together in this season, and we're so excited to share what, um, what we know and what we're doing with all of you and hopefully make us all better. Amanda, your project manager for Pastors Ryan and Jody. Uh, yep. Cameron, who are location pastors for our Bellevue location. They also both have central roles, and because of their roles, you end up with your hands in a lot of things around our church. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As a so. sweat breaks out on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, new and exciting things this week. Just, uh, It's amazing what happens even when you just transition to everything that that we do, okay, how do we do that in a digital world and um, just on your mark, get set, go. Um, so it's been an awesome week, full of fun, and um, actually I'm invigorated and excited about all of it. Absolutely, me too, me too. Uh, Amanda, you are also dubbed to be watching the Q&A. So Amanda okay. is gonna be watching Q&A, <laughs> load us up with some questions, interrupt Amanda at will, okay. and ask the Q&A questions while we're talking through things today. Okay. And then I'm joined by Rebecca Mant, who is on our culture team, I think we're calling it now, at uh, Champion Center. She actually helps us refine our culture at all of our locations. Yeah, guys, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy that we're leaning into this. And even though it is the season of social distancing, we are <laughs> not actually disconnecting relationally. So it's going to be awesome. Like they said, we're all learning together, and this is going to be fun. As an Enneagram 7 who had a birthday yesterday, social distancing <laughs> is about the worst thing that's ever happened to Becca. We, we actually did. Um, I received a surprise party via Zoom. So, guys, it's fun. You can make it fun. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is how bad we've got on Zoom is we're even holding surprise birthday parties on Zoom <laughs> now, people. This is, this is where our world is at today. So, it's awesome. It's awesome. Well, hey, um, I'm going to get us started here. Uh, for a few minutes today, and um, I just want to talk through, I guess, some some thoughts that have helped us try to start navigating uh, this this digital world. I'm going to uh, share for a few minutes out of my own perspective. Um, not that I'm the expert, I, but I have been navigating Zoom and online meetings for a couple of years now with uh, Leading Second and what we do there with coaching groups and even now webinars and we're trying to sharpen. And Becca, by the way, is on this call because she's the one that I always say, hey, will you figure Zoom out for me? So she's actually the one that has hacked, the, hacked all of the code here on um, how, because a seven goes to five in, in strength or health, which means a researcher. So I just, you know, just trying to, Help you get the best you out today, Becca. Uh, we've had too many of these calls. I'm getting like punch drunk here. On this <laughs> okay, um, I want to start by talking about Zoom for just a minute, if that's all right. Uh, the lay of the land for this call today is we're going to talk a bit about this platform. Uh, we're going to talk uh, then about meetings and some of the roles and ground rule rules and checklists that you know we're kind of working off of right now that go into successful meetings. Um, 
We're going to talk about some guidelines just for having successful meetings, period, whether it's Zoom or in person. And then we are going to take some uh, questions. I have some starter questions come in, particularly about engaging with people who are not as techie. So we're going to get there in um, get there in a little bit. Um, I want to start with Zoom today because to me, I'm, and I'm not paid, you know, on commission or anything. I, I am probably owed some commission by now, but I'm not paid on commission by Zoom. Um, but I do believe it's probably the best platform out there that exists for what we're trying to do today. I'm sure there's others. In fact, I will say this, that Google Hangouts in this season has made available their, their premium version of Google Hangouts, uh, I, I believe available for free, uh, just for, for all of us as we're trying to do this new work from our attic life you know, right now. So um, you may wanna check that out. I think any platform can work well if you work it and use its features. Today we're gonna focus on Zoom and kind of how we've used its features and I pray this will help give you some wisdom and guidance as you're attempting to um, you know, unlock this new digital meeting space for yourself. Uh, Zoom essentially has three main features that we use at Champion Center and Team Church. Uh, the first is webinar, which you're actually watching right now. And that actually separates out the, the four person video call that you see happening right now and then creates another group of people that are just you know engaging via chat, which by the way, if you're new to the call in the last minute and you haven't said hello, say hello to us in the chat. Leave your name, leave your church name, uh, your city, state. Tell us where you're, where you're here from. We would love to, um, we would love to know you're here. Celebrate with you. Um, this is webinar style. Webinar has uh, some features in it too that are really helpful for calls like Q and A. You've already heard me mention dropping questions in Q and A. That's that that's because we're using the webinar. Feature. Um, there's also polling, which um, I have not used yet. So um, I don't know. Maybe we'll try it out if we get bored here at the end of this call. Who knows? We'll we'll maybe give it a swing. Um, but this is webinar, and we use this for larger meetings. So right now we have almost 100, you know, leaders or churches logged on. Um, to me, it is much more productive. Uh, to use a webinar for a large group just because we don't see a hundred screens, you know, and everybody's background and movement, you know, on the screen in front of us. The downside, of course, is that it creates a one-way conversation, you know, so we're talking to you and it's hard to, to or harder to talk back, you know, can't, can't talk back on video as easily and all that. So it has its pros and its cons, but we love the webinar feature. That's what we've been using all week for our team church meetups. Then there's the, the mainstay meeting uh, through Zoom that I think we all probably know, and that is where everyone's on one grid talking, and uh, we use those a lot. I use those for small groups, for coaching groups. Um, Pastor Lincoln, I'm sure you're using those right now for team meetings and small groups and you know all the other things. So that would be the, the mainstay Zoom call that I think we're all familiar with. And then within meetings, there is a feature called breakout rooms. And breakout rooms, uh, Becca, why don't you talk about that for a second? Because we have used breakout rooms uh, successfully with different coaching groups or meetups when we've tried to break out into different topics or different people groups. Yeah, definitely. So breakout rooms have a few different um, perks to them. Uh, we've used them a few different ways. One of them um, in Meetup, so if you are doing, so coming up we're gonna be using them for small groups, but we actually, so we have a large group of people that we all wanna start together and then break up into smaller discussion groups so people can actually have time. I'm so sorry guys. You apologize guys. Hey, this is, we're just demonstrating media <laughs> etiquette right now. <laughs> Usually it doesn't come to my uh, computer, so apologize about that, as I was saying, for breakout rooms. And so it's really great because it provides a way to actually feel this cohesion of we're all coming together, but then also providing an opportunity to build relationship and have deeper conversation. Um, did you want 
I'm sorry, did you want me to go into some of the actual practicality of how to do breakout rooms right now or more just talking about the perks? Um, we can we can save that for just a minute. Okay. Um, but I think we can go over that at some point if, if people would find that valuable on this call. It's, it's to be honest, most of Zoom's features are pretty intuitive. And um, one thing I will say, uh, maybe Becca, Amanda, you guys can speak to this because we actually you know Lincoln needs to speak to this one. Um, we do like test calls, you know, where like we'll like we'll get I, I called the other, you know, last week it was like nine o'clock at night. I was trying to test something for the next day. And so I had Amanda up late. Becca's on late with me. Um, and, you know, we just get on get on the account by ourselves, test things out. We have a phone call kind of going on the side, you know, so we can talk about what's going on. I think, Lincoln, I even saw a video recently of you testing that with, like, stuffed animals or something, I believe, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yes, we actually created a how-to video to send out to all of our hosts, all of our <laughs> leaders. And so what I did is I took Batman, uh, Robin, and Ariel, three of my kids' toys, and I got my iPad, my computer, and my phone, and I set it up, and I screen recorded all these things. So I just had this test meeting. And for me, I have learned Zoom in those scenarios. I'm not talking to anybody except for Batman, Ariel, and Robin. And I'm just going through, hitting buttons to see what it does, changing things, trying new things. It's really, that's been one of the best ways for me to learn. And it's entertaining at the same time. I think we need to make some noise in the chat. It, raise your hand if you want to receive a copy of Pastor Lincoln's um, Ariel, Robin, and Batman video here. Uh, <laughs> I need to see this. I've just see, see this chat's going crazy now. Look at that revival breaking out over Batman and Ariel. Um, but the point being is we test stuff. I mean, we, we don't just leave it to chance. If you're getting a bunch of, you know, men's groups together or, you know, you have leaders on a call or whatever it is, we don't leave it to chance and mess around. We, we take it seriously and prepare. And so even breakout features, we're happy to talk about that. I think a little bit later, Becca, but for now, you know, just know that we we test it and we try it and we we work the settings and we work to get it right. I told I did this meeting spur of the moment last week and totally got a setting wrong and everybody was not on mute and it was loud and crazy and um, that was because I didn't test it beforehand. So I think it's just it's important that we bring that kind of excellence to our church meetings right now. Um, I want to share for just a minute, if it's all right. I want to share um, just just walk you through. Uh, how I have learned to kind of put together meetings. I'm going to talk out of the lens of these meetup calls. I'm literally going to use calls like this as uh, my analogy for you because that's what I do a lot as well as coaching group calls. You can eat the fish and spit out the bones, change it for yourself. But this is sort of how I'm looking at preparing things and making sure they're done excellently. And what I hope you'll see as I hope you'll see the amount of back end work that goes into this. This is not just turning a meeting on and praying all goes well. That there's hopefully, you know, 24, 48 hours minimum of prep that goes into um, uh, meetings. So first of all, I think there's a variety of roles that exist going into an effective meeting. Uh, the first role would be whoever's leading the meeting. And um, I guess right now for today, that's probably myself. And so my job is to, from beginning to end, from hello to goodbye, my job is to get the meeting all the way through its course, done on time, all the topics covered. So if discussion's moving, but I call it to go a different direction, we got to go a different direction because that it's my job to see that within our allotted time, we get where we need to go. Uh, the problem with being the leader is you can't do a whole lot else other than talk into the camera and lead and keep your mind engaged. If you try to do too much, you're going to come across very distracted. You're going to come across um, fidgety and all that. So I really work to keep my head in the game. So therefore, I also need a support person. And that support person is typically there to take notes or to grab you know, anything, any follow-up that is needed. So there's a support person on this call right now, and they're going to copy and paste the entire chat and every question that's asked, and it's all going to end up, you know, dumped into a Google Doc that I'll show you in a second. And uh, so, some, so someone's grabbing that that's not me, is I want what I want 
you to hear. If you're in a planning meeting, that person would be taking notes and grabbing, you know, they're not a court reporter. They don't need to grab every word that's said, but they're grabbing the main points of the conversation or the main decisions that were, that were made on the call. So you have a support person and then you have your guests. You have other people that are maybe invited to contribute to the meeting in some way. Right now that's Amanda Lincoln and Becca. And uh, they're there to offer meaningful, you know, um, information or teaching or content or even just to make me feel like I'm not talking to myself here. You know, I have some smiling faces to look at. Uh, that's sort of the goal of, um, of the guests. Every once in a while, um, like if I have Pastor Kevin on a call, I don't call myself the leader. I usually call myself like the moderator of the call. To me, that's the same thing. It's my job to say hello, goodbye, and get things where they need to go. But I'm very deferential. If I have someone like my pastor on the call, I'm very deferential to, to um, I'm usually asking him questions, usually pulling stuff out of him, but I'm following his lead a lot in those moments. So if you've seen any, any of those calls that we've done or even podcasts or whatnot, I'm st it's still my job to lead the meeting from beginning to end, but I try to do it a little bit more differential, if that makes sense to everyone. Are we good on that? Do you guys have any anything, anything you want to add on that section before we move on? Amanda? Um, just, we're even, um, we're going to talk about uh, small groups later, but we even have a second support person for if you're going to share a video for curriculum. And one other quick note that we found, you can auto save the chat. It's set up in the features where you can just, it'll automatically save to your computer. So that's another fun feature. Well, great to know because we didn't know that when we started out last <laughs> week. <laughs> it is. I found it out by happy accident. <laughs> hey, we are, we are all building the plane as we're flying it, as we're telling other people how to build it right now. So it's, this is great. And can I add in another thing about the breakout groups? I'm seeing some comments in the chat and in the questions. And I didn't mention before, but as you do the breakout groups, it gives you the opportunity to either um, automatically, like you can choose how many people in the group and it can automatically assign them, or you can actually go in and manually choose who will be in the groups. And so like some people are saying they have a group of 40 or they're wanting to do small groups. And so if every week you're wanting people to stay within the same groups, like there's a lot of options within that. Um, to you know, let's, let's just talk about this for a second, I guess, since we're here, Becca. So okay. um, what we've typically done with groups is we typically know ahead of time what group, you know, people want to be in or need to be in, you know, going into a call. So why don't you tell everybody kind of what you do? You're typically that support person on these calls for what we've done. Tell everybody just what does it look like for you? Perfect. So Something important to note is that only the host of the call can actually have the admin responsibility or admin permissions, excuse me, to create the breakout groups. So let's say this wasn't a webinar, but it was a normal meeting and Brandon's the host and he starts the chat or starts the call. As a host, he can assign other co-hosts and he can actually hand over the host responsibilities to me. So to everybody in the meeting, it doesn't look anything different. It doesn't mean anything different that he handed it over. But now I have different response or permissions that I didn't well, before. Let's just pause here for one second and get super practical. So yep. right now, like even for this call, I am logged in through our master, you know, team church login, you know, kind of thing. And if this was a regular call and not a webinar, you know, you'd be logged in yourself. But they, if you hover over someone's screen on the upper right, like I'm looking at your face, I, we can't demonstrate this for you, unfortunately, or we, we would. But if I'm looking at you and I hover, I see a blue, a blue you know, three dot button that if I hover over, it allows me um, several options typically in a meeting to make you a host and all that. But then that is that host responsibility is then transferred over to you. And I'd have to ask for you to give it back. Yeah. You know, kind of thing is how it works. And that's what we'll just reiterate. Zoom really is pretty user friendly. And that's why practice calls are great because we're going to walk you through all of these things. And it may seem as you're hearing it, you it may be like, what? But as you start to practice and play around with it, it will become clear. So you guys got this. Um, so as he handed over host responsibilities to me, now at the bottom of my screen where you guys see um, 
like Q and A or any chat features, I would now have a feature that says breakout rooms. And so I click on that and it gives me the opportunity to either automatically assign or manually assign. So when we've had groups in the past, we've actually wanted people in specific groups. So you just hover over the different things and I can rename groups. Um, let's say, for example, a lot of you guys are talking about small groups. What we're going to be doing is who in the past would have either been like our small group leaders or our table hosts are now going to be room hosts. They're going to be um, hosting a breakout room as if it were their table at church. And so I can actually rename that to, I could say, Pastor Lincoln's table. And then you, next to it, it just, you click on it and you can assign different people. If I'm going to do it that way, People have to be inside the call for me to be able to assign them. I can't like know that Amanda's joining, so I'm going to assign her. If I'm going to be doing it while on the call, she already has to have joined the call in order for me to be able to assign her. I'll make another note about this, is that I'm doing all of this in the background and nobody can tell that I'm doing it. So usually the way that we're doing it is that Pastor Brandon would be talking, maybe introducing. Um, for our small groups, that's when we're actually going to be sharing a video. And so they're actually buying me time. <laughs> so I have time to go through, assign people. Nobody will know until I click open room. As once I hit open room, everybody will have a pop-up on their screen that will say, you're being invited to a room. And they can choose to accept. And once they accept, it'll take, everyone will start to leave this main room and we'll enter into a new, it will look the same, it's just they're into a new room, a new meeting, um, and it will only be the people that have been chosen for that room. Now, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. With that, I, whoever has been chosen as that host responsibility, we call it admin host. There's lots of, <laughs> we're creating new terminology because there's table host, room host, and for Zoom purposes, you have to have be the host to have those permissions. So we are now calling that person the admin host to try and differentiate between these roles. So as an admin host, I'm actually going to stay in that main meeting room because anybody, if let's say I accidentally assign someone to the wrong room or they have a question, they can actually click leave room. But when they do that, they will come back to this main room. And that's when I can either reassign them, answer any questions. If somebody logs on late, I'll be there. I can assign them to a room. It's kind of like having, um, you know, a greeter in the lobby or a touch point person in your church. So you're like the, the monster on monsters Inc. The hello is asking you know, <laughs> like, like sits kind of at that desk exactly. always. And like, you're just always there. That's kind of how a little I'm, more cheery, but yes, a that's, more cheery. That's okay. Fair enough. <laughs> That's really important, though, because um, if people were to go back to that main room, no one would be there. And so, yeah, you, it's been great having you just flow that way. Um, keep asking questions. I'm not sure if we've had any come in that we need to address now, Amanda. We actually, we have a lot of questions coming in. Um, I think that we're answering them a lot. Um, so the... Uh, one of the things is uh, there's a lot of screen share questions. I'll just give you an example. We've already hosted FPU, um, Financial Peace University, last week, started digitally, and our pre-marriage class. And um, they're a little bit of smaller groups, so we come together like this. They're both using the room feature, but what happens is they greet, smile, hey, we're so excited. And the other support person, so again, for every group we have, um, there's a support person that's playing the video. They screen share, they're playing the video. While that's happening, just like Becca just explained, the other person is putting them in their groups. But before they open the rooms, the host, the main person like the Brandon comes back or our location pastor um, and smiles, wasn't that great, works we're about to open the rooms and you're going to go with your table host and talk through the questions. Um, so I hopefully that's answering the questions. Um, hey, I have a question on that because I've actually not seen that done. So when the, okay. when the person uh, screen shares, I'm assuming they're playing a video like from a website is what I'm assuming. Uh, actually, it's most helpful for technology and less um, 
video error if they download it to their desktop. So that your video person needs to have a desktop. They can't be on their phone and they should download it for the best experience. And then, um, but then when you screen share and play it, sound and everything goes through. Yes, we've been wow. practicing. In fact, <laughs> we've been practicing these. Um, Becca and I have been on quite a few. Okay, let's see what happens when we do this. And that was one of the things we found. I tried to screen share and put rooms at the same time, and they could see me doing the rooms. And that's how we were like, okay, can't be the same person. We need to navigate this differently. I mean, unless you were in a place that you had a lot of monitors. But <laughs> anyway, it was a, a great thing to know. Um, so somebody also asked about culture. I don't know if you want to touch on this, but how do you um, basically check in on the culture of each of these groups? And that is another feature. Like um, Becca could put Brandon in each of your rooms. She can take the main host in and out of all those rooms. So you can join in, see how the conversation's going. That's one of the ways. And obviously using your core team as your table host, knowing uh, we provide everything. We're providing the questions they're talking about. We are owning the curriculum they're talking about. So yep. um, as far as small groups go, that's, that's hitting small groups. That's great. Hi. Can I add one Brandon? more? Oh, go ahead, Pastor Lincoln. I, I just want we're we're treating these as if they were small groups, um, and so we've got small group leaders that are assigned ahead of time that we're calling our room hosts. So we've already met with them on Zoom. Um, we've already talked to them. We've walked them through the process. Everyone going into these has their assignments of what they can expect, and so they're ready coming in just like we would if we're going to have small groups. We're not just going to say, "Hey, you're going to lead a small group and go." We're going to make sure that we're ahead of time meeting with them, giving them all the information that we possibly can so they're confident going in, ready to go, knowing the questions, knowing what we expect. Um, they have co-host capabilities so they can mute people in their rooms if they need to. So really just equipping and empowering all of the people that are helping us with our admin, with our um, room hosts, all the different things so that they are um, uh, confident and, and ready to lead. That's great. I see you. I see another one of the major, I think we can a answer like five people's questions. To do webinar style or breakout rooms, you have to have the Zoom Pro account. Everybody else signing on can have the free personal account, but uh, investment for your church, uh, this would be essential to get the Pro account. Um, one thing to note, you can't do more than one meeting on the same account. Uh, a Champion Center, we were able to find a feature where you can do a bulk and we got 10 pro accounts to facilitate this time and it would be worth the investment um, anything any finance people on there as far as pastors that's really what it comes down to you do commit to a year subscription when you buy um, a bulk package like that um, we can give you the name of our our IT guy that that went ahead and did this package for us um, but you do have to have the pro account to yeah. host the meeting but not to, for your attendees to sign on the and i believe correct me if i'm wrong i believe we created an account for each location so we have five locations so lincoln you are the location pastor at our yakima location so I, if i'm understanding it right you have a zoom account for yakima location and then you're treating it just like a room in the church because we can only do one meeting at a time so the men's group meets at this time at fpu meets at this time and women's meet this and you know yeah yeah, we've actually strategically planned our Wednesday nights. We call them our forward nights. Um, and we've staggered like our our women's groups. We call them Propel. They're going to meet first. Um, and then our men, I think there's a half hour break between. And then our men's group is going to meet. We did this strategically for a couple different reasons. One, we want to treat them like it's just that small group. Um, and then um, also, if I, you know, like me and my wife, we have four kids. Um, it's too many, but we're, we're dealing with it. Um, if, if my wife is in Especially Propel, right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if my wife is, is in the women's group propel, I'm with the kids so she can just enjoy that for those homes that have um, kids. And then I'm going to hand the kids off to her. I'm going to join the men's group. So just kind of strategically our thinking on that. But yes, each location has their own account and we will stagger those groups so we can use those appropriately. That's awesome. It's good stuff, guys. Um, I want to switch for a minute. I want to talk about setting culture for your meeting. Can we talk about that? Um, just as a side note, I understand people can and sometimes need to log in on mobile devices, but anymore, since this is becoming like what we're doing, like this is church, I'm 
like on the verge of just asking everybody possible to be on a computer. Like don't, don't treat it haphazardly. Don't treat it any different than if you were showing up to the church building. Like let's be focused. Let's be intentional. You know, I don't have a bunch of other stuff going on. My phone's on silent. I have a notebook out or something to take notes without. And I think we just need to lead people to set culture. Otherwise you're going to get a, a, a whole lot of stuff, especially if we were one of those calls that would have 20, 30, 40 people on, you're going to see, as you've noticed, everyone's background, everyone's interaction behind them. So culture matters. If you were in one of my coaching groups with Leading Second, let me tell you what I would tell you, is that uh, we have, let's see, three basic rules for our coaching group meetings. And this is like a, like, like a one or two strike and you're out you know, kind of deal. Uh, first of all, no eating during the meeting, no driving during the meeting, and no kids around during the meeting. I love kids. My daughter is everything to me, just not during a coaching call. <laughs> and, and we just find that um, meetings go so much better, so much more productive when we're just here, when we're focused. Uh, so leaders don't shy away from setting culture. And getting on there and say, let's take this seriously right now. I mean, even if it's a if it's a ministry time, like a small group, especially, like God's going to speak to us right now. This is Book of Acts territory where we're meeting in homes, and the Holy Spirit is never digital. The Holy Spirit is always live, and the Holy Spirit is right there in every room. And like, just use language, find find your language to set great culture, but call people high. I'll, I'll give you one little example. I was on a meeting one time with a team. And um, it wasn't my team. I was a guest there. So I did the meeting. But as I was doing the meeting, it was just chaos. I mean, you know, driving, food. someone has me propped up behind their dinner. So smokes or, you know, steam's coming out of their boiling noodles. And it, it was just all, all manner of madness. And so at the end, I just took liberty. And I said, hey, can I say something to everybody right now? I said, I love you all so much, but I'm so distracted. I'm watching you cook and I'm watching you drive and you know, whatever. I said, can I just share with you my rules? And I just went over the rules and it was amazing. All of a sudden everything stopped, you know, everyone focused and all of a sudden I felt like we were able to get the meeting back on track. So that's what leaders do. Leaders lead. Leaders set culture kindly, you know, but, but, but strongly. Uh, for our meetings. Is that fair, by the way? Um, another uh, note I would say on a practical level is either set your meeting settings so that everyone arrives on mute or a couple times throughout the meeting, make sure and tell people, hey, make sure and mute yourself right now. As you can see, Amanda, Lincoln, Becca, they're following great protocol right now. They are muted. And that's just to eliminate any background noises that happen you know, during the call keeps it so much more focused. And then how we use it anyways, is if you unmute, that's our version of raising your hand and saying, I want to say something. And so unmuting means, oh, I need to pay attention to whoever just unmuted their call kind of a thing. Is that fair? Are we good? Okay. I'd like to share for a minute um, how I go about preparing a meeting like a, um, like a meetup, like this meetup. I'll, I'll just walk you through exactly uh, what I would have done. Let me see if I can screen share with you. I might have, oh, you know what? I can, I can screen share with you. We're just gonna demonstrate all kinds of things. Uh, let's see. Why are you not working for me? Pastor Brandon, while you're looking at that, can I throw a question at, oh, never mind. We're good. Oh, I got it. You got it. You want to go for this really fast? Yes. Okay. So here's how I organize the meetups. And by the way, we can send this to you. So no need to panic and write crazy. But I just wrote this down after doing a week of meetups last week. I just wrote this down, sent this to Jen, who's on team at Champion Center for Team Church. and. Um, Maybe this will help you. The first thing I do is I see, I'm the lead in this doc. So I see it as my responsibility to set the dates, times, topics, moderators, and guests for the call that I want to do. 
So if I, for today's call, I set the date and time. The topic was, you know, effective online small groups and meetings. I chose myself as the moderator and I asked Amanda Lincoln and Becca to be the guests. So that would be, that's my job. And then I usually am the one that goes around and confirms uh, with the different team members. You know, I, I called Amanda, I called Lincoln, Becca, whatnot. I say, hey, does this work for you? Um, someone else could probably do it. I just like asking. I like um, I like being involved in that process. So I typically will do that. And then um, whoever would be kind of the second lead or support on the call um, will actually schedule the Zoom call or webinar. So they'll go into Zoom, schedule it. They'll send it to everybody's Google you know, calendars. Um, you know, to all moderators, guests, and their assistants if they have assistants. So we just make sure that everybody that needs to know about the call has the call um, on their calendar. The reason we send it from Zoom, so we schedule the Zoom call and then we immediately send it from Zoom to the calendar, is that it sends the call information right in the calendar request so then there's no jockeying right before the call of like, hey, who has the meeting instructions? Hopefully, if we do our job right, it was already sent, it's already there, and everybody just seamlessly gets on the call. If you have a webinar, you have to invite your panelists separately, but there's instructions on when you're setting that up on how to do that. Let's go back to this. Uh, from there, um, I establish a support team for each meetup, so, or, or someone will uh, establish a support team, that's just anyone on the call to take notes, do follow up. I asked Amanda for this call just to watch the chat, watch the Q&A, that would be, uh, you know, I think what I mean there is anyone necessary, she mentioned playing videos, uh, whatnot. Um, we will create an RSVP form and share, this would be for probably a larger meeting, uh, we create an RSVP form through either Planning Center or Google Forms or whatnot for people to RSVP and get the call information. Um, for a smaller meeting, um, you could probably even just send them the, the you know, meeting instructions on their calendar. But whatever way, we create a way for people to let us know they're in for the meeting. Um, um, off of the RSVP form, we create a spreadsheet so we can watch the responses as they come in. Um, the next thing we do is we create a doc for the session flow. We create a doc for the session flow. And I'm going to show you one of those and what that looks like. Um, one second, guys. Hope, hope you're finding this helpful. We're just in the weeds now. So um, can you see this? Give me a nod, guys, if you can, you can see this all right. Okay. Um, this is a sample document that I use all the time to plan meetings like this. And so I will, um, I just try to keep it formal. I try to keep it excellent. This is usually a Google Doc. So I will share this with all moderators, their assistants, anyone who needs to see it. And you can see I, I title it appropriately, make it look nice. I'll typically insert a link to the RSVP form if we have it so they can also go on and see who RSVP'd. Um, I will put a little bit of a flow down, you know, hey, here's here's how the this meeting is going to go. And um, this is kind of the flow I see happening. I'll include some starter questions from myself so they can be um, chewing on them. I'll also invite them to contribute some up to the conversation as well. And then um, I'll insert any questions that come in on an RSVP VP form if we ask for it in advance. This is all living on a Google Doc so that we everyone can see it, everyone can stay on the same page. And actually, what the, what's going to happen like after this meeting and such is any notes we take are actually getting taken at the bottom of the same doc. So that the entire meeting, beginning to end, including follow-up, is all living on one document. That way, if we want to know what happened at this meeting on this time, we have one place to go to, and um, it's all there. Another trick we use is, let's say, because um, I know, Amanda, you're, I think you've been involved in some of these with me before, I think, with um, 
my responsibility is team church. So I have a team that meets about monthly for team church. Uh, we, we nicknamed it our team church high council. I don't know why or where that name came from, but it is the high council. I feel like Lord of the Rings a team of team church. And when we meet with our high council, we have one document that has all of our meeting notes from the past year. And so rather than a, a different doc for every meeting, we just call it our ongoing notes and we take our most current notes at the top of the doc. It has been one of the single greatest helps to me to have all of the notes in one place. You're not remembering what meeting date did we talk about this on and finding the right doc. You just go, you go to the ongoing meeting notes doc and it's all there in one place. I just went back and looked at ours the other day and I went all the way back to last August and it was, you know, for, for this next year's conference planning and, and it was awesome. So just little, little tricks of using Google Docs to help us all stay on the same page have been really um, important for us. Let me finish up on this, um, on this checklist and then we'll take some questions. Um, let me go back to it. So from there, I will, um, um, let's see, I'm getting toward the bottom. I'll train our moderators. So I'll just, you know, I'll provide them some information or, you know, any moderators or guests, just provide them the information they need going into the call. Um, someone right before the call will import um, any any questions that were asked in advance onto the flow just so we can all see them stay on the same page um, within a day or even the morning of i will do a final touch base with all moderators and guests and support team make sure we're all good to go um, we will share all the meeting notes in fact uh, for today's call we did that we actually huddled up about an hour before this call we chatted really fast we actually have a group thread growing, going on iMessage right now that we're talking about you behind your back right now on iMessage. I'm just joking. Uh, we're we're just we're asking each other questions so that we're not you know um, you know we we're not having to do it live in front of people. So it's it's become kind of a standard protocol for us that we just establish a thread, you know, on on iMessage, uh, you know, for everyone involved so that we're all staying on the same page the whole time. And then last thing I'll say that's on my checklist, very, very important, after the call is done, debrief. Talk about it or, or grab any action items you need. Like, like don't, the call doesn't end when the call ends. Make sure you just circle back, follow up. If you told somebody we're going to send something to you, in other words, make sure it gets sent. Make sure to go the extra mile and, um, and do everything you said you were going to do in the call. Hey, Brandon, I, I just, I just want to touch on one thing. Um, a, a meeting this week with about 40 people, the person that was sharing their screen, and this is just a helpful hint for all of you, for your people that are sharing their screen, or if you're the screen share, have whatever you want to share. And Brandon did a great job of that. Have it located where you can easily access it, but then think about what's on your screen. When you start sharing your screen, we had a situation this week where our screen share, um, did, was searching, had started to share his screen and was searching for the document. Meanwhile, his messaging was up on his screen and we were all reading a very personal text from his wife. So, it, I mean, nothing bad. It was very funny and it just really brought to light as you go through these things. If you're the screen share, be very aware of what's on your screen um, because people will see that if you are the person sharing the screen. So just wanted to add yep. that. Because totally. it could be very, very embarrassing or very funny. Totally. Well, and like, like I have my notifications, you know, off on my phone right now, or I'm sorry, on my computer right now. And I did. I looked through my tabs quick. I, you know, um, it was all about Zoom and meetings, anyways. So I figure I don't care if y'all see it, you know. But it, it probably, it, yeah, you're right. Just be really, really mindful of because you know what people do. People look for all the margins of your photos. They look for every every little thing, right? Um. Amanda, Becca, do you guys have any questions or anything to add? Um, so we have a lot of people asking about young and old. Um, I'm going to have Pastor Lincoln talk about youth and what we're doing with youth, but uh, really quickly, um, like this week we did pre-marriage, and our two pre-marriage hosts, that they are amazing, but they are in an older generation. And so I 
I mean, really, I got on the phone with them. We did three practice Zoom meetings, like looking at their background, turning it on and off, starting the meeting, restarting the meeting, connecting other people. Um, so I think really if for an older generation, I'd be willing to go the extra mile, be willing to go over and help them turn on their technology. But it was amazing. And maybe the best win or feedback I got afterwards is the people who signed up for pre-marriage were just so thankful that it didn't get canceled. They were thankful that we were trying it. And so I think people are okay at first with maybe a few hiccups, maybe, you know, I was there the first night. It took a minute for everybody to get started and get on the call and, you know, just people figuring it out, which was, you know, some what the participants, but really just be willing to hop on the phone, go over and visit, and get signed up. Um, our youth have mostly been doing IG Live, but they're about to do one big Zoom, uh, which is a, a playoff of what, something we call one big night. But uh, Pastor Lincoln, they're asking about do's and don'ts or how we can set up our youth for like maybe the similar kind of ground rules. Yeah, I, and I think, um, I think we're always wanting to, we want it to be, especially with youth, we want them to have fun. Uh, and I'll just give an example of something I did last night. We had our, we, our leadership school, which is LeadX, we're using Zoom right now. So we had 36 of our students last night on a LeadX meeting. And a lot of them are younger. Um, some of them not, but a lot of them are younger. So I, I said at the beginning, I said, hey, everybody, because there's a virtual, you can actually set a virtual background. Some of you may know this, some of you may not know this. You can set a virtual background on your screen. And so I said, okay, and I'll actually do it right now. I said, okay, everybody take the next 30 seconds and show me your best virtual background. I'm gonna snap pictures, I'm gonna snap screenshots and go. And so they just went nuts. They know technology better than I did. I saw pictures of me, I saw pictures of Pastor Kevin, I saw all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and so for me, it's just really setting, I'm gonna turn that off because it's a distraction. There we go. It's just really setting those ground rules of, we're, we want to have some fun, but we also want to lean in. Um, and so taking that time, giving them a minute, giving them a couple minutes, or, you know, for me, it's, it's if you want to have a virtual background, that's fine, but leave it on there the whole time. Um, because it really can be a distraction if, if we're having a, a, a serious conversation about, we were talking about living forward last night and all the different things that go with that. If, if, if people are constantly changing their virtual backgrounds or, you know, there's a lot of things going on with them. So creating a fun atmosphere, but giving them some time to do that and say, okay, now, hey, we're going to lean in for the next 15 minutes. Uh, so let's all just put our, our virtual backgrounds back to normal and then just really clear about those expectations and using that mute all, um, I think is, is a very important thing. We love mute all. And hey, I'll, I'll add on, I, with uh, leading second, you know, we have an all remote team that is in five time zones in three nations. So um, let's just say scheduling meetings is a little bit of a bear, but we did a, a Christmas party uh, in December, middle of December. And um, this was, you know, it was backgrounds like this, you know, the whole time with uh, Christmas and all that. So it's a lot of fun to do it, but I think setting the setting the ground rules is important for everybody, you know, so that we, we don't get a little too crazy with it. <laughs> Another question is, um, oh, go ahead. Amanda, can I, I want to address the, the older thing really fast. Okay. Can we just talk a little bit more about that? Here's my take on, on people that consider themselves not tech savvy. Okay. Um, number one, when it comes to pastoral care and when it comes to right now, like, like this week, next week, we are in a triage unit right now. We, we, we are leading in a culture that none of us saw coming. You know, many were unprepared for. So you're in triage right now. If you have older people in your ministry or that would be on a meeting, it's worth the extra mile to meet them where they're at right now. Like call them, write them a card, stick it in the mail, like do, do the old school stuff because right now our job is just to not lose anyone. I mean, our, our, our job is simply to stabilize. So go old school right now and don't beat people over the head if they're not addicted to social media like you and are not, you know, high on the screen time and all that. That being said, 
once we get out of this kind of triage, you know, season, I don't know when it's going to be. Um, and maybe we're heading that way now. I don't know. Um, I think it's also appropriate to hold people's hand and say, let me show you how we can use technology and, and, you know, help them um, get, you know, call them on the phone, walk them through it, be patient, be kind, but help them to make their way on. They could just be a little bit of wisdom away from engaging just like, just like everybody. So I, I don't know. I'm just kind of making the appeal to be pastoral and meet people where they're at. Don't roll your eyes and go, Oh, our church just isn't tech savvy. Well, guess what? We really don't have anything else right now. So there, there is no tech savvy, not tech savvy right now. This is our world, but I think we can show kindness and we can help people make the journey. Is that fair enough? You know, just, just to really go the extra mile for people right now. And they didn't ask for this. Neither did we. Let's help them. Becca. Um, yeah, I was going to, somebody in the questions had asked, I said, Zoom, maybe it for a while any suggestions innovative ideas for reaching out to our neighborhood city to reach the unchurched during this season so um the other guys on this call may have some other thoughts but i'll just share um personally what me and some of the other leaders are doing we're going about it the same way we were before but now doing it digitally so on sunday hosting watch parties with our church inviting people to church just doing it digitally but then also now we have small groups and they're going on through zoom calls but i have friends who are you know have not come in the past won't come whatnot but i'm actually not just immediately or not only inviting them to small group i'm making the effort to hey let's hang out on facetime let's do a facetime friend date you know the same way i'm gonna connect with them and show <laughs> extend that relationship get to know them as a person and then say hey i'm meeting up with more girls later for small group for church do you want to come to that you know it's really i, I not innovative, but I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing, but now just utilizing what we're doing with technology. Um, so I'm not sure if some of the other panelists have ideas that are maybe actually innovative, something different, but I just want to encourage you guys, don't stop doing what you've been doing. Um, and if you haven't been doing that, then maybe this is a great opportunity to start doing that. Um, yeah. It's easy. Everyone is looking for connection and they'll jump on. Yep. I, I have several friend dates this week with people I haven't connected with in a long time because they're hungry for connection. That's, that's so true. Hey, I'm going to give a shout out in the chat to Brandon Wall. He just said this, going back to our conversation on people who might be a little more out of touch with technology. He said, I just burned this week's service on a DVD at, last night uh, for some awesome people that don't have internet. Took three hours on the old MacBook because we <laughs> burn a DVD. Uh, we found the need through our voice calling campaign. So that's exactly what I'm talking about with, with like we're in triage right now. If it takes pulling out the old MacBook, burning a DVD, you know, walk it over, drive it over to their house, just call it an essential activity right now, you know, and um, I, I think that's great. I think that's exactly what we're talking about. It may not be sustainable forever, but right now I'm not sure that that matters. Right now we're just trying to help, you know, in, in any way, you know, that we can. And I just wanted to give a shout out to that. I thought that was really awesome. Uh, we have a couple of minutes here. I wanted to share one more little section from myself and then, um, you know, we're recording this, by the way, and we're probably going to go a little bit over our time. If you need to leave, this will be posted on the Team Church podcast as well as the Open Network. Uh, so feel free to dismiss yourself. Uh, but I want to share one more thing before we go. And that is just my personal guidelines on having an effective meeting. This is just for me. So um, take it or leave it. Others on the call might have some better wisdom. But I have six points on on an effective meeting. First of all, set an agenda. Every meeting deserves an agenda. It's the best if you can send it a minimum of one day in advance. And it's best if you can set culture around your meetings that when we show up, we show up ready. So we show up ready to discuss. We show up ready with ideas. So in other words, if the agenda is to brainstorm Easter, like we show up with ideas for Easter. Like we're not sitting around going, all right, what does everybody think we should do right now? 
you know, no, we, we, we actually show up, hey, I was looking online, or hey, I have this Pinterest board, or hey, here, you know, here's another YouTube video I found, just whatever the case may be. We ask people and expect people to show up prepared, but that only can happen if you send the agenda. We send it in a Google Doc because that sets up the rest of these points that I'm about to share. The second point is start and end on time. Honor people's time. Lead your meetings with excellence. Don't schedule an hour if you only need 30, but don't schedule 30 if you need an hour. So get your time right and start and end on time. Also, number three, stay on topic. No rabbit trails. No rabbit, major rabbit trails. So if a rabbit trail is important enough, it deserves its own meeting and it deserves an agenda and it deserves prep time. It deserves all of those things if it's truly important. So, so you are not allowed to take our meeting way off track. We're meeting for X, Y, and Z purposes and we're gonna stay on topic for the meeting. Uh, the next point, I've made this abundantly clear today, someone other than the leader takes notes. So someone is on the Google Doc where you put your agenda just taking notes, grabbing the meeting in real time. It's even great on Zoom if you can record and you know, link or upload the you know, link to the recording or you know, what have you. Um, that's a great thing to do. Um, my fifth point is probably the most important is action items. Every meeting, Amanda is probably the, the, the chief of this, every meeting has to end with action items. Action items are who does what by when. Who does what by when. If you can't answer who does what by when, you did not have a meeting, you had a discussion. So do not walk away. In fact, it's someone's job. And if, if it's no one's job, it's your job before the meeting ends and say, hey guys, we need to set some action items right now. Who does what by when? And then my last point would be turn those action items into project management. So take those action items, put them into whatever project management solution you have. If it's Basecamp, if it's Trello, if it's checklists, if it's an email follow-up, whatever it is, turn your action items into project management. You now have your workflow. And then the next time you meet, guess what your first meeting you know, agenda item is? It's to go over the last meeting's action items. Did everybody do what they said they were going to do? Um, so I don't know if that helps anybody. Just I, I feel like if you as the leader set excellence to your meetings, you're going to get excellence out of uh, the people attending your meeting. Any other comments or last questions before we wrap up today? I hope this has been helpful to somebody. Uh, I, I love talking about this, oddly enough. Um, but uh, any questions, anything you're seeing that we need to get to, Amanda? The last question that I think just would be helpful for everyone, and maybe you guys can chime in, chime in uh, how far in advance are we sending out a link for a meeting? Um, so like for us, uh, we're about to have our online um, forward nights online, and we're going to send it on Wednesday morning for a Wednesday evening. Um, mostly just to give everybody time to sign up. And we, we personally at Champion Center threw the net very wide. We invited like all the men and women in our database um, with an opportunity to sign up. So um, a couple hours in advance, and then we're asking our team, our hosts, our table hosts, to follow up via text. Hey, here's the link for tonight's meeting. So um, that's what we're trying this week, and um, so we'll see. Yeah, and you know, you probably got, if you're watching this live, you probably got an email 30 minutes out, you know, with the call information um, as a reminder. Of course, this is a little bit of larger scale. We're sending it from the database, but on a small scale, even just a quick text or email out with the meeting information, I think is really helpful to, again, set culture. Uh, Lincoln, Becca, anything else from you guys before we head out? Something, something that I just, I just thought of as Amanda was talking, um, so for, for the, our leads in Yakima, we've got, there, there's eight of us. I've, I've scheduled a weekly meeting um, with them just to have conversations about where we're at, where we're going, what are next steps, all the things that Brandon just talked about. And in Zoom, you can actually schedule meetings. And so I've already set the schedule for the month um, and they have access to add those to their calendars. So they know exactly when those are going to happen, how long they're going to be. The link is already attached to it. So they're ready to go. So for those regular meetings that you're either having with staff or maybe your small groups, you can use that schedule feature. It's really helpful to, to link that to your calendar. 
All right. Well, I hope everybody has enjoyed this today. This has been a team church meetup. We are in your corner. Uh, our mission is to equip the teams that build churches that impact communities for Christ. So may today's call just be an effort, or, you know, an installment into that mission. So we love y'all. We're walking with you. Uh, we're praying for you. And um, until next time, let's run strong. Let's build church. Love y'all. Thanks for joining us today. God bless. Yeah.